In 1921, African-American entrepreneur Harry Pace needed a name for his new recording label, a division of Pace Phonographic Corporation. The former Greek and Latin professor named his new company Black Swan Records after the musical sensation Elizabeth Green Field, the Black Swan of the 1850s through 1870s. Today, February 27, 2024, Lyle Station Historic School and Museum salutes the musical enterprise that preceded Motown Records by almost four decades. Born in 1884 and raised by a single mother after his father died when he was an infant, Pace excelled in school, graduating as valedictorian at Atlanta University. He was privileged to be in one of the classes taught by W.E.B. Du Bois. Pace moved to Memphis, where he met W.C. Handy, the self-proclaimed father of the blues, and collaborated on songs and formed the Pace and Handy Music Company. Pace then moved to New York, working in the sheet music business. Then in March 1921, Pace borrowed $30,000 to start Pace Phonographic Corporation Incorporated in his basement with Black Swan Records as the recording division of the company. The famed Ethel Waters was his first major artist to sign with Black Swan. Just over a year later, Pace employed 30 individuals, including its own eight-man orchestra. Within a year, the company boasted an income of over $100,000. The company focused on producing popular music by black performers for black audiences. In its brief but productive two years of business, Black Swan Records released 180 records, in itself a record since no other solely black-owned recording company could beat that number for 30 years. In a financial glitch, Pace entered a business arrangement with white-owned Olympic Disc Record Corporation in 1922, which took them into the mainstream. Although Black Swan's focus remained on African-American performers, the company shifted into white bands and then white-owned recording companies also entered the black music industry. Unfortunately, Pace had not made the needed connections with radio stations and radio broadcasters promote music. By the end of 1923, Black Swan Records declared bankruptcy and sold off its catalog. Despite how short-lived the company was, Pace could take consolation in knowing it was the first and launched the musical careers of Alberta Hunter, Trixie Smith, Fletcher Henderson, James P. Johnson, Carol Clark, and Ethel Waters. Black Swan Records provided a venue where African American performers could record their music for African American audiences without depending upon recording companies owned by white executives. Harry Pace opened the doors for Barry Gordy Jr., who founded Motown Records four decades later, providing an avenue for racial integration and crossover success for African-American performers.